Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining uh, today's webinar. Uh, Melinda, if I could get another sound check. I'm not sure if I'm muted or unmuted. Uh, thanks. Good. Appreciate it. Uh, well, thank you, everybody. Thanks for joining us for today's uh, IndieSoft Web Studio version 8.1. That's kind of difficult for me to say. I say, I say version 8.0 uh, a lot. Uh, if you've ever seen me give presentations, uh, I try to make sure I mention the product name uh, quite often. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Scott Cortier. I'm Senior Technical Sales with uh, IndieSoft. Uh, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, a lot of people that I, I recognize and uh, I've worked with in the past uh, on the webinar today, thanks for joining everybody. Really, thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, good interest in, in version 8.1. Uh, we had good attendance this morning. Um, good questions. I've tried to update the slide so that we answer everything as efficiently as possible in the afternoon webinar here. Um, a few of you have put in questions. Uh, I'm going to get to those during the presentation. I think all of the the questions you have, I have material in the slides. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started here. So what we're going to cover today, uh, the main focus of today's presentation is version 8.1. Uh, but before we get started on that, here's an agenda. Uh, I'm going to cover uh, just a couple of slides. What is IndieSoft Web Studio? Most of you, uh, by joining us, uh, are going to know what IndieSoft Web Studio is. But I wanted to kind of set the tone and the stage of kind of where we're going and what we're doing and, and why uh, we're doing adding some of the features that we're adding um, and talk about some recent releases and some of the recent new features supporting um, the things I'm going to talk about in the overview. Then we're going to uh, cover what everybody wants to know is what's in version 8.1 um, and the roadmap for the future. But before I forget, I wanted to point out if you haven't seen this from us, uh, we're up for the Control Engineering Engineer's Choice Award. We're finalists uh, for the HMI category. Uh, so please cast your votes. If you are not a Control Engineering uh, magazine or website subscriber, uh, they will allow you to register and then go vote. Um, so when this presentation gets posted uh, along with the recording uh, on our website in a couple of days, this link will be live. This will take you to uh, the Control Engineering website and uh, allow you to then go vote uh, and, and specifically pay attention, please, 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 to the software uh, HMI category uh, of which we're up again for the, the 2018. This is, this is how we get uh, uh, these awards by uh, voters like yourselves. Uh, so please, please, if I could beg you, do that uh, and thanks, uh, especially if, if it means something to you, if it's soft. Uh, mean something to you. We have some very loyal customers and we really appreciate you uh, voting for us over the past years. Um, let's see, some quick logistics before I get going. On this type of webinar, I can't hear you. So if you do have questions, put those into the chat panel or the Q&A panel. There is a, a Q&A section at the end. Uh, this morning I got uh, uh, beat up pretty hard with a lot of questions. I'm going to try to cover those uh, in the material um, in the slides. I added some slides from the uh, additionally from the morning presentation. So uh, if I don't get your question answered, then then go ahead and put that in there. So uh, let's see what else we're gonna we record these webinars. This will be up on the website in in just a few days. It doesn't go up there immediately. It takes a little while to do uh, some editing and some producing and and making sure it's available for everybody. And let's see, I think I mentioned earlier there's a survey. Let us know how we did today. Give us your shirt size. We'll send you a free T-shirt. And uh, let us know if you'd like to co-host a webinar with us. We'd love to have you on, uh, as well as some of our other customers. Uh, would love to see that as well. Uh, overview. All right, let's talk a bit about what is uh, IndieSoft Web Studio. Many of you will know it uh, because I, I see uh, most of you are existing users, uh, although a few of you I don't recognize. IndieSoft Web Studio is an easy to use, uh, yet still very flexible and very powerful HMI and SCADA software. Now, the reason why I bring this up is uh, some of you will know us as kind of a low-end HMI software. Some of you will know us as uh, full SCADA software. And I want to make sure everybody realizes the, the scalability of the product. And, and as you'll see in a few minutes, I'll talk about the ability to create a project once and deploy it on multiple operating systems is a big aspect of this product. Uh, down in the bottom, you're going to see uh, that uh, many of you have known IndieSoft as supporting Windows operating systems for their runtimes, and uh, not only just Windows, but Windows uh, desktop, CE, mobile, embedded, 
and server additions as well. And um, a few years ago, about three years ago, we started adding support for Linux and VxWorks runtimes as well to add in that Internet of Things or industrial Internet of Things um, aspect. So if I advance here to the next slide and uh, we take a look at the these three slices as portability, mobility, and interoperability. Uh, across the top here, you're going to see these different operating systems. Uh, many of you already know this, that, that uh, uh, Indusoft Web Studio supports uh, not only Windows Desktop and Server Editions, such as Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 10, as well as uh, Server 2012 and even 2016, uh, unlike our, some of our competitors that are still struggling to catch up with Windows 7, I think, um, we support Windows Embedded Standard 7, Windows Embedded Standard 8, Windows Embedded Compact, formerly known as CE, as well as Linux and VxWorks. What's really neat is the flexibility. Um, uh, uh, recently, I had a customer ask, okay, we, we have Windows CE and Windows Embedded Standard 7. They had a customer coming in in the afternoon and said, I'd like to show them uh, your flexibility. So I developed a project for their Windows CE device, deployed the exact same project on their Windows Embedded Standard 7 uh, industrial PC, and then used that to publish uh, the screens that they then viewed on their iPads and their Android phones. And all of that happened in just a couple of hours, and they were they were thrilled to be able to show that to their customer in the afternoon. So, uh, so anyway, the portability, the, the scalability across multiple operating systems, that's a, a big benefit. And the mobility part of this, many of you will know that we've had um, the web, the three different thing clients, the web thing client, which you needed uh, Internet Explorer for, and that's often used in an office environment. Then we came out with Secure Viewer. Uh, to be able to deploy effectively multiple HMIs running off of the same runtime uh, on large machines, long processes, things of that nature. And we've had those for quite a while. And then um, more recently, in the last few years, we've been focusing on our HTML5 offering, which this thing client we, we call SMA. And the SMA client runs, again, off of HTML5, and you can just open up any browser. You don't need uh, an app. You don't need to maintain an app. We don't need to maintain an app, and your customer doesn't need to maintain different apps for Apple, for tablets versus phones, uh, for Android versus and, and desktop. Uh, so it just makes it real easy. You open up a browser, an HTML5 compatible browser, and you can view and with security, interact with those screens. Um, so that makes it really, really nice. And this is a focal point. This is one of the reasons why I'm, I'm doing this overview is because I want to talk a little bit more about our focus on HTML5 going forward. And one of the, uh, the bigger things that you're going to see in 8.1 is uh, our addition of the objects to support HTML5, uh, the SMA client. In addition to those uh, portability and mobility features, uh, the interoperability or the ability to communicate to different things, not only PLCs, but temperature controllers, drives, barcode readers, RFID devices, uh, if it communicates, there's a good chance we can talk to it. I had a, a customer a little while ago, we were working on a building automation application, said, hey, can you communicate to these elevator controllers? And I had never done that before. We took a look at the protocol and we used our built-in TXRX uh, driver and developed some simple commands and were able to talk to their elevators. Um, so uh, here we picture robots. We've got uh, drivers that will communicate with FANUC robots, uh, KUKA, uh, Kawasaki, Motoman, uh, you name it. So if you do integration or your customers do integration with robots, that's a good uh, opportunity for you there. Again, temperature controllers, barcode, RFID, databases, Many of you will know our capabilities to go to databases, cloud-based architectures. We're going to talk a little bit of some of the future related to that. Uh, if you're not familiar with this protocol, MQTT, it's becoming one of the uh, more prominent protocols associated with the industrial Internet of Things. We have uh, not only do we have MQTT built in, but we've got uh, some new features in 8.1 uh, and, and recent versions for that, uh, as well as uh, 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 OPC UA uh, communications. OPC UA is a, another one of the uh, rapidly up and coming standards for the industrial Internet of Things. 
Uh, so let's see, make sure we don't have any outstanding questions. We're good there. And all of this lends itself to making your applications, uh, you know, your machines more productive, more reliable with uh, higher security in mind. Uh, okay, so I, I had this question come up several times, so uh, I want to make sure everybody knows that this, this is truly the case. Uh, our investment protection, this is something that we've We've talked about for years, and it's still true in version 8.1. Yes, you will be able to take a project that was uh, uh, developed in version 8.0 or 7.1 or 7.0 or 6.1 or all the way back to 1.0 and open that project up in IndieSoft Web Studio 8.1, and there's no conversion process needed. It will just come in and uh, be 100% supported. Uh, so uh, we want to protect your time. Uh, your development time, your customer's time. Uh, so the this is a question that came up a lot. Yes, you'll be able to take version 8.0 projects and bring them into 8.1 or even 7.1, 7.0, 6.1 projects and bring them into 8.1. Um, many of you who know me know that I was actually a customer before I was an employee at Indusoft. And recently uh, we had a customer uh, that I had co-developed a project uh, with Back in the 1990s, uh, I forget exactly what version that was on, but it uh, wasn't wasn't much later than version one. And uh, that customer said, "Hey, we we want to upgrade our our projects to this was version 8.0 um, and take advantage of some of the new features that you have. Uh, how painful is that going to be?" And we said, "No painful. Uh, just open it up and away you go." Um, so they they purchased an upgrade to uh, at that time it was version 8.0. They added new features in, and we helped them deploy that uh, over one of the holiday breaks, and they were really, really happy with that. Uh, so, um, again, uh, take any any project developed in a previous version and bring that into 8.1 should be just fine. Um, so, so uh, some recent new features. Uh, if you're not aware of this, um, we've done several webinars on this, and we have uh, uh, some good blog articles and some discussions. We have an import wizard for uh, Rockwell Automation's Factory Talk product. Uh, this is the Factory Talk. Obviously, is not an IndieSoft product. I give credit where credit is due. That's uh, a Rockwell Automation product, and and uh, we allow you with this import wizard to take projects created in Factory Talk View M E or S E and import those into IndieSoft Web Studio. It'll convert those projects into IndieSoft Web Studio projects. And what I mean by that is they will essentially become IndieSoft projects at that point, and then you can continue to use them as they are or add to them and add their uh, additional capabilities uh, that may be features that were not supported in Factory Talk uh, that are supported in, in IndieSoft Web Studio. So uh, some things to note. No import tool is ever 100%, um, so you can make some manual adjustments, either you know, tweaking the application here or there, or um, again, as I mentioned, uh, adding new features after the automatic conversion. So a few different things that you can do there. Uh, I had one group that ha has used the conversion tool, and they estimated that they saved about 85% of their time uh, for converting. Um, so if you just do some simple math, I don't know how long their, their project uh, took, but um, you know the, the 85 percent. If their project was going to take 100 hours, then it only took roughly 15 hours to do their project. Save them a lot of time. Uh, and if I remember right, that was a pretty complex uh, project. So you can see that we can bring in uh, tags, screens, graphics, alarms, uh, and uh, even driver information in there. So. Uh, take a look at that if you're interested. Contact your your IndieSoft sales representative if you want to know a little bit more about that. And we've also done some webinars on that as well. Showed you showed you some of those features. Uh, we've recently added a global find and replace uh, for text. It really helps to find things. It, it for those of you who've ever had to troubleshoot an IndieSoft application, we've got some really nice tools, and this just really enhances it even even further uh, to be able to find uh, text anywhere in the application and replace it. Uh, the next slide here, we've we've um, added uh, on our embedded view license support for Windows 10 IoT Enterprise. And I want to point out that um, 
Windows 10 IoT comes in a few different flavors. There's the core product, and I forget the other one, but uh, uh, we support the Windows 10 IoT Enterprise version on our Embedded View license. So this is similar to Embedded Standard 7, um, and um, so it just you know gives you yet another platform uh, to support uh, uh, IndieSoft Web Studio. And I think I mentioned this earlier, we also support um, the full runtime um, server 2016 as well. All right, if you didn't know this, uh, in addition to the uh, trend logging to a database uh, on IoT View, which is the Linux-based version, we added uh, our already existing built-in scripting commands, some of them to be able to uh, interact with uh, databases remotely. So DB execute, if you're familiar with that, really you can do any SQL commands. Um, and so now the flexibility has just been, been uh, you know, increased that much more for uh, the Linux and VxWorks version of IoT View. Uh, makes it really, really nice. You can do a lot of stuff there. Um, we added driver authentication and encryption for the MQTT uh, driver. Uh, if you have any interest in that, uh, we've got a, uh, uh, a webinar specifically talking about that and, and some additional features. So, uh, or contact your IndieSoft uh, sales representative. Uh, so we've had the MQTT driver for a while. This adds the authentication and uh, encryption into that protocol as well. If you didn't know this uh, a few versions ago, um, I should say service pack or patches ago, uh, we added swiping as a gesture. Uh, and so this is something that was asked about for a long time. Let me go ahead and show you. Let me open up IndieSoft Web Studio version eight. Uh, let's go down here to IndieSoft Web Studio version 8.1 and launch that here. And what this basically gives you is a right-click menu, and uh, let's see, I think it's, I want to say it's in a graphic script. Let me go ahead and do that here. And in this demo, uh, let's see if we right-click, no, it's not in there. Uh, I don't remember where that actually is. Maybe it's, oh, I know where it is. It's on the screen. Uh, so I have to open up a screen, and if I'm on a particular screen, and I go to the script, and uh, here I can right click, add touch events, and we've had these for a while for supporting multi-touch. We've had multi-touch support for quite a while, um, but here is uh, what you do on swipe right, on swipe left, and on swipe down, and on swipe up. And if we go back to the presentation, I don't know if you can see this here, but there's basically on swipe right, we've just done an open screen command. You can do any VB script in there um, and, and it'll support um, not only opening screens, but uh, uh, doing other things, increasing values, acknowledging alarms, whatever whatever you might wanna do by swiping different directions. Um, uh, so now there's a, a mechanism to do that uh, before you had to do a lot of scripting to be able to do swiping uh, left or right to change pages, and now we have that built in. Um, also in a recent version, we added uh, the grid control object into um, our SMA uh, client. And this is what I was talking about early and why I went earlier and when I, why I went over kind of the overview and what our um, future path is, is to really um, add or, or bring the features that we have, um, all of the features into the HTML5 uh, space. And so we've been doing that for a while and the last few objects that we've, we hadn't done. Now with 8.1, uh, we can say we've got 100% of the functionality of, let me state, say that over again, we've got 100% of the objects are now supported in the HTML5 uh, SMA interface. We don't necessarily have 100% of the functionality of all of those objects. That's work, things that we're working on now. But uh, now we have uh, not only the grid control, uh, but also recently we added the trend control. And there's some updates for the trend uh, in 8.1. I'll show you that. So we've added the trend control to HTML5. Um, and now, uh, kind of what everybody's been waiting for, uh, what's new in version 8.1? And there was a question that came in earlier um, about the release notes. When is it available? 
So originally we had planned on uh, releasing uh, IndieSoft Web Studio version 8.1 uh, yesterday, and uh, we came across some things. We just weren't ready to release it yet. We want to test some more things and make sure that uh, uh, it's exactly right uh, before we release it. So uh, we're now tentatively going to release it uh, later this week, early next week, uh, but it should be out in just a few days. So. Uh, if you are really looking for release notes, uh, I can show you those, uh, and or um, uh, if you need some more information, let me know or let uh, your Indusoft representative know and we can get you those. If you really need those in advance, uh, but otherwise, uh, they will be available from the Help tab in the product, uh, or we'll put those up on the, or I should say, and uh, we'll put those up on the website. So if I open up the, the Indusoft website here, and uh, how this normally works, let me go ahead and log in here. And let me take this off screen just to make sure I don't accidentally show everybody my password here. And okay, so we should be logging in. And once I've logged in, if you go to uh, documentation here, uh, we when we re release the product, you will have right here at the top, you'll have under documentation, you'll see the release notes for version 8.1. So that'll be um, up there on the website. And we do that, so if you're not sure if you wanna upgrade to 8.1, you can at least grab the release notes without having to download the entire product. Uh, so that's one way that you can look at new features uh, that have been added in. And, uh, or you can download the product and take a look at it uh, that way. So um, you can always go into uh, the help system, which is up here, and go into release notes, and you can see the different issues, so any um, issues that we've had to resolve or any new features are listed as requirements uh, here. So this is a list of uh, the changes that we have, the release notes for version 8.1. Uh, again, if you have any questions of those, this uh, this will be up on the website in just a few days here, so uh, please sit tight on that. And let's get that out of the way here. And let's see, so that answered some of the questions um, there. Let's get back in here. Uh, okay, so the last of uh, kind of the three major objects that we had to add, the uh, grid object, the trend object, now we have the alarm and event control object uh, supported in the SMA client. So now you can, use this to interact with alarms um, just as you're, you're used to uh, on remote devices, um, giving you, you know, kind of the standard interface uh, to be able to see those for those of you who are familiar with uh, the IndieSoft alarm event control object. Um, one of the things that I should point out, I didn't point out in, in this morning's uh, webinar, is that, um, uh, let's see if here it's, it's in the release notes, because um, I think that's where I found it, is that um, we actually added a feature and the um, trend, no, the alarm event control that now it supports if an invalid user is trying to log in, it logs that into the um, um, event uh, list. So it didn't used to do that before. If you were a, a known user and you used an invalid password, I think that logged you, but if you were an unknown user, uh, didn't keep track of that. So now we've, we've added that based on customer requests. Um, so that's in there as well. And I wanted to point that out because this uh, alarm uh, object also handles the event lists as well. So that's in there. We've also added uh, smart messages. Uh, so those are something that uh, customers have been asking about for a long time. I know some of our system integrators uh, kind of pinged me on that uh, every so often. Uh, well, now it's in there. The smart messages, which comprise message displays, multi-state indicators, and, and uh, multi-state push buttons are in there. And the list box is in there. And uh, push buttons as well. Uh, so the push buttons, uh, are, if you don't know this, push buttons are different than the button objects, and the push buttons have been added into uh, the product, into 8.1 as well. Moving on, the trend control object uh, in the SMA Thin client now supports what we call multiple selections. 
that's essentially the ability to have uh, your trends or your pens on different axes. Uh, so let's see if I can do this here. Let me go to uh, my application. And we've made some changes uh, to the PC demo application, just a few slight changes. If you haven't looked at it in a while, uh, it's, it's worth looking at again. Let me open up the, the PC demo. Um, many of you will recognize this. This has been around since 8.0. Um, we've uh, changed a few things. What are some of the changes that uh, we've done? Uh, let's see, we fixed, I know we fixed some typos. Um, here's some active objects. Uh, recipe management reports, trends. Okay, so I've got the trend uh, object here on the um, full runtime. And if you didn't know this, in PC Demo, you can actually go up to this little tablet and phone icons here and launch your um, SMA browser. In this case, it'll launch whatever your, your default browser is. Um, notice up here, if you're very familiar with uh, SMA, instead of going to IWS 8.0, it now goes to IWS 8.1 folder. Um, and if you didn't notice this, I had this question come up this morning. Um, is there any way to not go to the tiles, the little green tiles that we started uh, supporting with the mobile access client and go right to screens? And to get to the, the screens um, directly, let me go ahead and um, do this over again. Let me uh, uh, close this tab here and let me just start typing. I'll, I can type in the uh, IP address and what many of you may not have realized is that you could go to just the local IP address or whatever the, the IP address of the runtime is, IWS 8.0, or in this case 8.1 for the new version, and index.html. And that will take you to, uh, with security, let's type in a guest here, um, these little tiles that come up. And here they are. This is our first interface that we had. And customers said, hey, I don't want to go through that interface. I want to go directly to my screens or my screen group. Uh, so we added, this has been in the product for a while, but I guess a lot of people don't know this. You can, after this URL here where it's index.html, you could type question mark, screen, equals, and then the name of your screen. Let's say it's main. Uh, or in this case, we have a startup group, which is multiple screens named as a group. We're going to go to startup.sg. You have to put in that .sg if it's a screen group. And again, we have to give security here. Once we do that, you get to see your screen or your screen group just as you would uh, on the full runtime. I wanted to point out here, let me go to features and trends. And uh, what you can see here in the trends as we get this, uh, now we have this multiple selection. So now you can take these uh, trend pens that have uh, multiple axes here and combine those on uh, the same axes. Uh, so it becomes a little bit more easy to read. Um, you can get your cursor on there. You can do auto scaling. Auto scaling is not going to work for this application because I'm already at minus 100 to 100. If I had some values that were not full um, height or width, that would be a little bit more relevant. But uh, um, let's see if there's any available option for a cursor in the trend showing actual time on the timeline. Uh, I think we can do that. Let me pause this here. And if you take a look, uh, here is the time shown right there uh, at the top of that little flyout window uh, of where that cursor is. Um, so you can see that. Hopefully that answers that question. Uh, so that's a, an option for the uh, SMA client. That's actually. Uh, something that's not really supported in the uh, full version, although you can do it. We have a trend annotation example that will allow you to do that. Uh, so uh, hopefully that uh, answers that question. You're very welcome. Thanks for asking the question. Uh, let me um, move this out of the way here and go back to the PowerPoint presentation. Uh, stack the pens. Okay, so we did that. Uh, we also have support now for OPC UA server. Now we've had OPC UA client in the product for a while. And let me just uh, stop this here and go back into my development environment. Under communications, 
in addition to our built-in drivers, uh, for a long time we've had OPC DA. Uh, most recently, we've had clients for OPC UA, .NET, and XML. And we've had those, oh, geez, for several years, uh, I think, and we were one of the first to come out with an OPC UA client uh, for this type of product. But um, we've now added support for um, OPC Server. Now, if you weren't familiar with this, we actually had support for OPC DA Server for a long time. And to get access to that, uh, you would go uh, on your home tab here under your local management, you would go under your tasks and start up this task here, this uh, Studio SCADA OPC Server. That's the OPC DA Server. And what does that do and why would people want that? That uh, server allows third-party clients to come and request information of Indusoft Web Studio and ask uh, for our tags. Oh, sorry, I accidentally clicked on installing software there. Uh, so it allows uh, third-party software, in this case using OPC DA, to come by and ask for uh, tag values in Indusoft Web Studio. So uh, what we've added now is the ability to configure an OPC UA server. Now to configure that, you go here under project, communications, and down here is a section for the setup for um, OPC UA. Now there's a chance that we're gonna make a single button uh, on here and expand this. This took up a lot of room in this interface, but <clears throat> um, that won't happen until later versions, uh, if it happens at all. But this is where you set up your connection to, um, uh, or how you want your clients to come in and connect to you, whether or not there's uh, uh, security with your with certificates, whether they're self-signed or you've you've uh, enabled those from some other um, site. Uh, however, you set that up. This is how you enable this um, and uh, uh, give that kind of a name and allow that to, to come in. Uh, one of the things you'll probably have to do, much like the OPC DA server, is you'll have to come in here to the OPC UA server runtime and make sure that this starts up automatically when your project starts up. And then that way it'll automatically start whenever you run and uh, uh, then third-party clients can come by and grab tag information from the Indusoft Web Studio tag uh, in your tags in your project. Um, let's see here. So we'll close this, and let's see. All right. Um, so back to the PowerPoint presentation. So what I just set up was the OPC UA server. I'm not actually going to demonstrate this today because we're going to. Uh, probably have a webinar in the next few weeks that, that we're going to do that. Uh, we're going to focus on the OPC UA server. Uh, but uh, so again, what this allows is third party clients, non uh, Indusoft products, again, third party to come by and, and interact, uh, read and write uh, to and from the Indusoft tags. So this is supported on the full runtime, the embedded view license, and the IoT view license or the Linux based version. So now this is going to give you the ability to exchange data uh, with, with systems like ERP systems, other HMI or SCADA systems. I worked uh, a few years ago with a company up in Toronto that uh, had a vision system that needed to grab information from our tags uh, to be able to interact with that. We were, I think we were positioning a camera. Uh, 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 tilt and zoom with uh, tags that we were passing it over an OPC uh, interface. So this is uh, a really nice way to be able to interact with, uh, again, the full runtime embedded view and IoT view. So now across all of those platforms, the full runtime, the embedded view, and the IoT view, we now have the OPC client supported for UA, so OPC UA clients, and OPC server supported on those different platforms. So now uh, we've got communications. If you're not using um, uh, our built-in drivers, now you can get uh, at the tags uh, or, or communicate uh, with, with third-party devices just about any, any way you'd like to. Uh, let's see. 
uh, there's a question that uh, has come in uh, about uh, Google Map integration. We've actually done some demos with that. In fact, the version 7.1 uh, demo had a Google map uh, built into it that you could pass custom uh, pins to it and uh, different uh, zooming and capabilities. So uh, that, that was built into the 7.1 uh, demo. If you need some more help with that, uh, uh, more recently, some of the features that we've added, uh, let me go here specifically, uh, this custom widget feature adds a whole lot uh, more support for APIs and things like uh, Google Map integration. So uh, get a hold of us and, and ask us uh, if you want to see a demo or you need some more help with that. Uh, but again, the 7.1 PC demo uh, already supported that, and, and we can bring that in and show that to you if you need, need that. Um, so hopefully that answers that question. Let's see here. Sorry, I'm looking at uh, some questions off screen to make sure that I have those. Uh, how do you display the second axis in the dual graph example? I'm not sure what the, the exact question is, but let me go back to the runtime here. And if I open this up, so the question was about trends and displaying multiple axes. Um, so that is here under trends. So I just have uh, multiple pens here, and this is set up where they each have their own axes. And that's a setup that you do if we go here under features, trends, in the trend object, and when you set up axes, um, oh, let's see, where is that? That's just checking this checkbox for multiple selections. So each one has its own uh, uh, axes there. Uh, so in this case, we've got uh, multiple pens set up, uh, multiple, multiple of those, and we've hidden a few, or uh, you can combine those. So I hope that answers that question. Um, question came in, what kind of integration is there with cameras? Um, uh, so thanks for this question. There, there was a, we did a webinar for custom widgets. Uh, actually, I don't think it was a webinar. I think it was an example video where Fabio did a, a custom widget with facial recognition. Um, so the, uh, this is getting a, a slightly off topic, but it's a, a really nice feature in the product. So I'm going to, I'm going to go there. Um, this custom widget feature is very similar to ActiveX. Uh, I didn't want to click on that. Sorry, ActiveX or .NET. Now, ActiveX or .NET are third-party tools that have been compiled that support those ActiveX or .NET standards to, that we can then interface with. Well, in in non-Windows environments, ActiveX and .NET. Uh, objects don't work. So what we've done is we've provided this new tool here, and this is really, if, if you, you kind of need to be a JavaScript programmer and or uh, um, HTML5. Now I did a, a demo, if you go back and take a look on the uh, Indusoft website, and it's always a good place to go. Um, let me open up the, the website again here. Uh, on the website uh, a couple months ago, I did a tips and tricks webinar, and I actually, uh, demonstrated that uh, custom widget feature. I went to the, the internet, I grabbed a custom widget off of a real website, and I implemented it into the product uh, and did a demonstration of that. It only took about 10 or 15 minutes. But if you go here under support, video library, webinars, um, and scroll down here just for tips and tricks, uh, it's in there. So that custom widget is in there where uh, you might have seen the uh, facial recognition one that Fabio did is here under video library example videos. And it's a couple down here, I think, a custom widget tutorial. Fabio actually did a uh, facial recognition where he had the camera on his laptop recognizing his face versus somebody else's face and kind of log you into the system. Um, the, the underlying idea with the custom widget is it is essentially uh, a browser window. Uh, and so using that, the real question that came in was, how can you interface with cameras? So that browser window could then interface with IP-based cameras uh, or other cameras that have other architectures that you want to then just point to them. Uh, so that's one of the real good ways. And that tutorial that Fabio went through shows you how to develop that, that interface. And, and the person that asked that question, if you really need to, to, to see how that's done, let me know. I can show that to you. 
Uh, good question, by the way. Sorry for getting slightly off track, but it's a really, really cool feature here. Um, let's see, where was I at here? Um, in here. Uh, oh, uh, the, the big thing that we've done in version 8.1 is we've simplified the licensing model. Uh, so there's these kind of four bullet points. I'm going to talk about these uh, independently. All the licenses now support an unlimited number of concurrent communications drivers. Now, in the past, uh, our 150 tag and our 300 tag, those supported one driver. Our 1500 tag supported three drivers. Uh, and then up from, up from there was five drivers, eight drivers, and 32 drivers. Now, all of the license levels just support an unlimited number of drivers. We wanted to make this easy, wanted to make it simple. Uh, so you can put as many in there as you want to, as you're going to communicate with. Uh, notice that you know it is going to be constrained by the horsepower of the PC that you're running it on, the number of ports. For example, if you only have one serial port, you're not going to be able to add two or more serial drivers in there unless you um, uh, handle port switching, um, which you can do in IndieSoft Web Studio. Um, but uh, uh, you know the, the constraints are really going to come based on the um, the hardware at that point. We're not limiting you based on the license level, the number of drivers that you can put into a project. So that's really nice. We've got um, some really good feedback on that now. Uh, in addition to that, we, we've had a couple of uh, drivers uh, for elect DNP3 and there's an IEC protocol that, that we've had available as add-ons. Well, they're no longer add-ons. They're just part of the driver list that you get to add for uh, and those drivers are only supported in the full runtime in the embedded uh, licenses, embedded view licenses. So um, be aware of that. And uh, all of the import wizards, uh, I talked about um, uh, the factory talk import uh, wizard. Well, there's actually three different uh, import wizards that we have. We have Panel Builder 32, uh, Panel Mate, and Factory Talk. And they used to be individual licensed add ons. And now we're just kind of bundling them all together. So if you buy one, you get get three. Uh, so that that makes the uh, uh, you know simplified. You know, you're going to import. Uh, maybe you're going to import other other. Uh, you have other opportunities, especially if you're a system integrator. Maybe you have a, a big facility and you've got all these different things in there. Let's let's just make it easy for you. Um, got some good feedback. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, appreciate that. And. Um, uh, let's see. Other questions have slipped in here. Um, yeah, there's, there's. Um, we got some questions about uh, uh, some specific drivers that we have for some of our our different partners, uh, and that is still the case. Uh, you would have to go through that partner to get that particular uh, driver, additional driver that they require. So we we can't sell that. Um, so if you need that particular driver, you have to go through that that particular partner. Um, let's see. The next, the last bullet point here is um, there's no longer a restriction on the type of thin clients uh, that that you can use. What we mean by that? In the past, if you license, when you license the product, there was a section down here in the register tool. You know what? Let me just open up the the register tool. Let me close my project here. Let's stop that. Close this. And I'm going to go to uh, all products. Let's go to IndieSoft Web Studio version 8.1. By the way, I'm still running a beta version. So if there's any problems, I have an excuse. Um, but we do plan on coming out with this just in the next few days or so. It was supposed to be out yesterday. We decided to hold it back uh, and, and make sure it's really ready and, and uh, give it just a few more extra tests. Uh, so if you go here in the register tool, and uh, so again, I'm talking about thin clients here. Uh, I happen to have a hard key in, and if I go check my hard key, here uh, in this section over here, if you've ever registered or licensed the product, there used to be independent sections for web thin client, secure viewer, and SMA. And now we just bundle that all together. And now, yes, I've got kind of a special license. I have a thousand thin clients uh, enabled on mine. Um, but uh, uh, if you have that uh, set up, then um, you get to mix and match concurrent users of either WebFin client, secure viewers, or 
SMA thin clients. It doesn't matter the type anymore. Uh, no longer do you have to individually license those. It's just a total quantity of concurrent thin clients, regardless of type. Now, the other thing that we've changed is, let me close this here, is uh, in the past, uh, we had predefined quantities of thin clients. So in the past, you had to purchase them in multiples of two. So you could have two, four, eight, 16, 32, all the way up to uh, 128. And uh, what we found is that caused some users some grief. So uh, now the user can de define the exact number of thin clients they want. So uh, in the past, if they needed 32, uh, I'm sorry, if they needed 33 thin clients, 32 wasn't enough, and they had to go all the way up to the 64 uh, uh, thin client uh, package. So now if they need 33, you can actually just purchase 33, and uh, they don't have to, to, to purchase um, you know, all the way up to 64. There were some questions that came in earlier about, um, uh, yes, so, so effectively you have three licenses, one uh, web thin client, one secure viewer, and one SMA. Um, we found a, not a lot of people were using those and they were using one or the other. And so when you go up to now in version 8.1, effectively you get one thin client license. Uh, it could be of any type, uh, you can mix and match, and if if uh, the person who's logged in gets off, it can be the other type that can log in. Um, if this causes you some issues, uh, definitely talk to us. Let us know, and we'll we'll make sure that uh, uh, we do our best to work this out with you. Um, so I hope that uh, uh, helps you out there. Um, let's see some other questions coming in here. Driver development, uh, yeah, we still have the driver development uh, SDK, but uh, no, it's it's uh, not included. It's still an add-on available, and part of the reason why we do that is that that driver development SDK really needs some help from our developers, and it, it takes some resources, so that is still a paid-for uh, add-on. So, uh, good question, though. Appreciate it. Uh, all right, so uh, Yes, uh, there's there's a, another question in the in the queue here that uh, is there an upgrade cost uh, from 8.0 to 8.1? Uh, whenever we change versions, uh, so from six point, you know, in the last uh, boy, last 15 years or close to the last 15 years, there's been version 6.1, 7.0, 7.1, 8.0, and now 8.1. And whenever we change those versions, those are paid for upgrades. Um, but we're we're doing something a little bit different uh, this time. We, we're offering a license slash maintenance uh, promotional uh, thing. So um, if you didn't know, if you uh, uh, had purchased uh, uh, a previous version and uh, you had the maintenance agreement, well, you get that version for the next version if you're still in that maintenance agreement time frame you get that version free. And if you had purchased um, a previous version within the last, whatever the time period is, a uh, few days, few months, uh, and, and we come out with a new version, well, we're, we're gonna update you for free. So uh, I, I've done something that I very much detest in this PowerPoint slide, which is a bunch of animations. Uh, but there's so much information on here, I wanna do this um, in a step-by-step -step fashion. So. Uh, so let's do this. All right. So uh, if you purchased a license, any license uh, in uh, on or after July 1st of this year, 2017, then you're eligible to be upgraded to uh, version 8.1 free of charge. Just let us know. Uh, we can do that for you. So uh, again, just in the past few months, if you if you purchased. Uh, uh, another version, whether it be 8.0 or 8.1, just in that time frame since uh, July 1st, uh, you can get that upgrade to version 8.1 free of charge. All right, so that's one bullet point. The next bullet point, any license purchased from the beginning of the year, January 1st to uh, basically before July 1st, so from January 1st to July 30th of 2017, uh, are eligible to be upgraded to 8.1 by purchasing the maintenance agreement. Now, we've got a deal for you here. Uh, normally, the upgrade price is 60% of the, of the license price. But if you purchase the annual um, maintenance agreement, the standard uh, maintenance agreement, which is just 20% of the license price, 
we're going to upgrade you uh, or allow you to upgrade if you want to uh, version 8.1 uh, and it's going to be retroactive from the date when you purchase the original license now for example uh, if a license was purchased on February 1st, 2017, and, the, and then you go ahead and purchase this uh, uh, annual maintenance agreement, which is just 20% of the list price, you're going to be eligible for free upgrades uh, all the way for one year from the time when you purchased that license. So uh, until January 31st, 2018, the day before this is, is uh, a full year. Uh, so I hope that makes sense. You can do that at 20% of the of the license price and get your your uh, 8.1 license. Now, if uh, any license was purchased before this year and you want to go up to 8.1, you can pay that upgrade price, which is still a, a pretty good deal, only 60% of the license price, and you'll get upgraded to uh, version 8.1, unless you already have the annual maintenance agreement and and it's still active, then you'll already get a free upgrade to version 8.1. Uh, so I hope all that makes sense. Um, and uh, this promotion is going to end at the end of this year. Uh, of course, we'd like you to get that in before December 31st um, and, you know, make sure that uh, purchase orders go through and whatnot. Uh, make sure that you get that in uh, earlier rather than later. And so licenses um, uh, purchased uh, before 8.1 was released to the market, uh, after December 31st, well, then you're going to have to pay that, that upgrade fee, that, that 60%, uh, as mentioned up here as well. Uh, and again, unless uh, you have that uh, annual maintenance uh, agreement as well. So hope that uh, that explains most of that. Let's see. Uh, so that question that covers, that question that covers uh, one year. Uh, there's a question that has come in. Uh, can we have different, I want to rephrase this slightly. Can we have different versions of development installed on the same machine? Uh, yes, you can. So for example, here I have um, version 7.1 uh, and down here I have uh, version 8.0 and now I have version 8.1 all installed on the same uh, machine. So uh, no known issues with that. Uh, in fact, we encourage that. Uh, that can help you out as you have to manage different uh, customers, different machines that have different versions. Uh, that's uh, certainly one way to do that. Um, license for upgrade. Uh, you're very welcome. Thank you for the comment. Um, question came in, what about OEM licenses? I'm not sure what, what you mean by that. Um, do you mean uh, some of our partners or, or um, uh, so again, not sure what you mean by that. If you clarify that question, can you run 8.0 or previous version with an 8.1 uh, license? Uh, I'm going to answer that question, but I'm not sure if I understand it. Let me go back to a slide that I had previously. If this doesn't answer your, your question, um, let me know. So if I go back to some of the earlier slides here, in version uh, 8.1, you can bring any earlier project into 8.1 and it will, it should work uh, 100%. It should be 100% compatible. Um, so anything that you developed in, in 8.0, 7.1, 7.0, 6.1, et cetera, uh, you could bring into an 8.1 uh, runtime. Hopefully that answers that, that question. Um, let's see, try to catch up back to where my slides were here. And Oh, sorry, I got to go through this animation again. All right, so the future roadmap of where we're headed. Uh, what are we doing in the future? What are we planning on adding? Uh, again, we're going to continue to round out the HTML5 support. Now that we have 100% of the objects in 8.1 supported in SMA, now we're going to go back and make sure that those uh, features, we're going to add support for those, those objects that... Uh, uh, maybe we skipped some features just to make sure that we got them in for a majority of the customers. Now we're going to go back in and round out those those objects to make sure that all the features are supported uh, as we continue on in the future. So these these are all things that uh, are planned. We have uh, major plans on working on these, but of course, uh, you know, sometimes plan change. And I'm just 
you know, covering my butt here and saying that these are subject to change. We don't have any time frames on these yet, uh, but as a mobility feature, uh, we're looking at giving you um, a, an option to uh, uh, have kind of a secure viewer-like uh, option to run on non-Windows um, uh, 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 operating systems. So you'll have this kind of viewer that will run on iOS and Android and Windows and other devices. So right now, if you're running on those devices, you have to view it on a browser. So we're coming up with the idea of, of a built-in viewer, kind of a local viewer instead of a browser only for those uh, devices. So that's something. Um, portability. Uh, as you may know, we have a uh, built-in scripting language, the IndieSoft built-in scripting language, um, and uh, that is supported on non-Windows environments, or a lot of the features are. Uh, but we also have VBScript, and VBScript is not supported on the non-Windows environments. So uh, we're looking at uh, supporting JavaScript as a, another scripting language so we can offer some scripting support in those non-Windows environments. Uh, let's see, there's a clarification of a question. Integrator company, we're only partners. Do we need to pay for an upgrade? Um, yeah, uh, so if you are a uh, certified system integrator, uh, our certified system integrators, if you take a look at our uh, integrator program on our website here, let me call that up. Some of the benefits to being one of our certified system integrators is, uh, let's see, partners, system integrators, integrator, no, nope, that's not where I wanted to go. Partners, system integrators, system integrator, Let's try this one more time. Benefit, I'm sorry, partners, certified system integrators. Here we go. So here's a benefit list, and uh, you can get development licenses, up to five development licenses if you've become a certified system integrator. So um, uh, just to send us an email if you want to upgrade to 8.1 if you're a certified system integrator. So uh, it, it, it got mentioned in the same question that you're an OEM partner. So. Um, whoever you normally work with at IndieSoft or, or in your organization, uh, yeah, just, just run that question up through them. They should be able to answer that. We should be able to get that back for you because I, I hope this answers your question, but I'm not 100% sure that well. Uh, native support for nested classes and multidimensional arrays. This is something that has been asked uh, for by many of you. I personally have asked for this as I've developed project out, projects out in the real world. Uh, this would be really handy, and this is uh, planned, and uh, I think some of our guys are already working on this, um, and uh, it's not going to be an 8.1, but somewhere down the uh, road in the future. Native interface to deploy and run applications in the cloud. The idea will be that uh, uh, much like when you use IndieSoft uh, Web Studio and you use the uh, remote management tool, if you are, I'm going to open up um, version 8.1 here. Uh, if you're using the remote management interface and you know you can connect to a remote runtime and use this to download and start and stop your projects, well, the idea that we're, we're um, talking about is to have a native interface and a way to deploy cloud-based applications. So whether you're using uh, Amazon Web Services, Rackspace, and Microsoft Azure Cloud, or whatever your cloud-based application is, rather than trying to manage that through those uh, different companies, their interfaces, uh, we would allow you to manage that uh, much like we did the um, uh, remote management and just kind of click, download, and away you go. So uh, that's something on our roadmap that we're working on. Also, for IoT View, which is, again, our Linux uh, and VxWorks runtime, we are adding support for the ABC IP driver. That's the Ethernet IP driver, works with control logics and compact logics and micro logics and things of that nature. Um, support for that is coming very soon. That's going to be sooner rather than later. Um, that you may even see uh, before the end of the year. That could be um, uh, very soon. I think we're doing tests and QA tests on that now. So. Uh, don't quote me on that, but if you need that uh, for IoT View, let us know, and uh, uh, we can probably uh, help you get it, get that uh, very, very soon. Uh, all right, so I'm going to go back through and scroll through my questions, because I think that's really 
uh, all I had. So if you have uh, other questions that I didn't answer, I think I've got everybody's questions from the early ones that came in um, to all of the different ones here. So I'm scrolling off screen and looking through the different questions. Uh, all right. Got that, got that. All right, I don't see any questions. If I missed your questions, I apologize. Um, um, this questions interface is a little tough to use over on the, the side of my screen here, but uh, I really appreciate your time today. Um, trying to keep it uh, here around an hour. We're at uh, about two minutes over. Uh, if you need anything else, uh, let us know. If uh, there's other questions that I haven't answered, uh, contact your Intersoft uh, sales representative let us know. We, we always, if you haven't figured this out, we're pretty easy to work with. We want to uh, make sure you have an easy time. We make it so, you know, um, the product installs, you get everything included that you need for an HMI or SCADA project. Uh, very few exceptions uh, for additional things uh, that you have to come back after us for. Now we've even simplified that license even, even more. So good compliments coming in. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, let's see. Let's see. I just want to take one more look here at the questions on the chat panel and the Q&A panel. Uh, looks like I've gotten them all. So if you need to get a hold of us, here's some different ways that you can. Info at Indusoft if you have sales or commercial related questions. Support at Indusoft.com. It's a good way to get a hold of our support group. You can always call us. Uh, let us know uh, uh, what you need. And uh, thanks. Another compliment's coming in. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Uh, and with that, I would like to thank everybody for joining us. Really good turnout. Uh, thanks, everybody, for being on. And um, uh, really appreciate everybody joining. Fill out that survey. Let us know how we're doing. Look forward to the end of the year. Uh, we'll be sending a, out an end-of-the-year survey uh, where you can put us, uh, uh, let us know uh, how we've done, how we're doing in general for uh, the year. And I also want to point out one more time before before we go, uh, if you didn't notice this at the beginning, um, uh, vote for us again if you're a control engineering uh, uh, subscriber. If you're not, sign up, become a, a control engineering subscriber, and then vote for us for 2018. I uh, really appreciate that. So with that, I don't see any more questions coming in. Uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and end the webinar. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we'll see you again in our next webinar. Have a great day, everybody.